Filming in the studio is much easier, but as a lot of you may know, a lot of times you have to head out to the road. Up until now, I think a lot of people have been using you know, cellular, right? AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile, but Starlink, Starlink is a new thing, giving pretty great performance. So Ryan, do we still need those cellular providers or can we just move to Starlink for all our remote live streaming? Well, I think the whole point of this was the fact that like, we want the redundancy. We want to have multiple gateways or pathways. And when you move back to that singular point, you have a singular point of failure again. So you could encompass several Starlinks, but what if the backhaul was the cellular part and they seamlessly flowed together? So when one satellite disconnects from the dish, the AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, or whoever else picks up in that interim gap. So it's not or, it's actually and, I think, in this scenario. Yeah, a Starlink is great most of the time, but you right. really do need a great view of the sky. You do, and, and things can become blocked pretty easily. There's some inherent challenges with cloud cover or somebody standing in front of the unit. Or cats deciding to warm <laughs> themselves on your dish, which is a right. serious issue for Starlink users, right? <laughs> Apparently, but you know, the dishes have gotten smaller and smaller. The new Starlink Mini has uh, oh, excellent reports. It's a dinner plate, right? It's a dinner plate and it has the integrated modems. Now everything is internal to that device. I've seen pictures of them like suction cupping the things to the top of a sunroof and driving down the road. It's just like the portability yeah. of this. So I think that it comes down to is like, why not diversify still? I think diversification is your best success for streaming in the field and certainly parallel Yeah, so, devices. you know, there's, there's the Live View Solo. This has been a super popular device. It's got HDMI in, so you got an HDMI camera, you plug it in. It's got a battery and a, a cellular modem. Do they do bonding? Like, can you use the two cellulars at the same time? I've started using, in my early production days, like the LiveView Solo. That's what, you know, got me through my early productions when I had internet challenges. But inherently, especially with a device like this, is that it is limited to just bonding that one video source. This has an HDMI input, some have SDI, but you're gonna just bond the video up to the server and back to your destination. Yeah, it's, it's not internet bonding, right? Correct, and I don't LRT, get... it's their reliable video protocol. Correct. Now, there are other LiveView devices that do have plans that you can get some data off of the, the data pack itself, but that's in a much different category of yeah, device. That, that's We're talking not, about like... That's not about, right. Yeah. And when you plug into those devices, they use one of the cellular modems. There is... No data bonding. Right. And I think the other thing is we're talking about the difference price point of like a bicycle versus a car. It's a wonderful device for getting your video up into the thing. But, you know, you can also aggregate Speedify in front of it to get more data connections and have that. You can use the router. You know, there's tons of ways that you can cut this. But the, the difference and the advantage of the router is that you don't need a bonded video encoder once you bond it with the router at the very beginning, you can use any encoder and it's bonded, right? Because your whole network right. is bonded. So one cool thing about the live views is they do have an ethernet port. So you can get a Miri router and just plug it in. Look at that, immediate, it got the flashing lights, it's using it. So I guess that brings us to the point of what the heck is a Miri router? The idea is, is that you are bonding at the beginning of all things, okay? So if you have multiple production PCs, somebody monitoring the social media comments, somebody monitoring the streams and the bit rates and everything that's going out, everyone is going to take advantage of its bonded connections, which this device has a 4G and a 5G SIM card slot built into it, has two WAN and two LAN. It has two USB ports on the front, which you can tether additional USB cellular modems, maybe like the hotspot pucks or your cell phone, or you can convert this from USB to ethernet and have more wow. LAN connections, you know, coming in from other sources, say like one's fiber, one's cable, and one is dial up. I don't know, right? right like the right, possibilities right. are endless. Yeah, yeah, so two ethernets here, right? I, the other day plugged into two Starlinks and they each connect and get the 200 down and the 40 up and you can run them both into this and, and have them bonded. And then of course you've got the, the 5G, you've got the 4G, you've got the Wi-Fi. 
Right, there's a ton of in and out and you have pair and share. So when we talk about like this type of device, again, it sometimes isn't, do I have use this tool or that tool? Sometimes you blend the tools together to create a more robust, more reliable system. There's nothing wrong with having a dedicated bonded video encoder. Only shtick that this thing does is that, but there are no other inherent advantages to how most productions are run today, which is, you know, you kind of just want to like monitor the chat. You can bring up the graphics you know, all of that requires going to a web page. That, requir that requires two way just to see the comments coming in. That's a absolutely connection. right, and that's what you don't get with a dedicated video bonding solution. When you bond the entire stuff, now all of those things become a reality. It also uses batteries. Correct. Want to talk so about this? What kind of batteries the, are these? These are Sony NPF batteries, and it's great that a lot of devices have batteries built in. But in what happens when that battery reaches the end of its useful service life? Typically, that's not replaceable. You throw the entire device away. So we knew from the very beginning we wanted to build this with batteries that could be hot swapped. You could select the size. Like there's multiple sizes of these NPF batteries. This is yeah. like the big guy. Going to power you with two of them. They're hot swappable. You can stay running indefinitely by just switching back and forth, but you can choose the size and a milliamps of battery you want. They're also really cost effective. Yeah, you can buy like a four pack of batteries and a charger for 80 bucks online. Third party, you know, you can get no name brand ones. Yeah, no I mean like brands, look, we, we always recommend like a good quality battery. You could yeah, It makes a difference. Yeah. So what bonding software is on this? Well, he the greatest <laughs> bonding software that is out there. This unit was designed with Speedify in mind, right? This is the reason why it's the first officially supported hardware with Speedify, uh, because we collab together. Powered by Speedify. <laughs> Look at that. It is powered by Speedify, but that also means that we're taking advantage of some really cool technology that's there. Not only like your integrations that you've done with Starlink to optimize mm -hmm. how Starlink is bonded together, but things like Parent Share, which is such a unique feature that no other company has, physically, you'll have seven data connections into this unit. Sometimes you need a little more, and that's where you can pair up to 12 additional cell phones right. on the same network into this router. Right. I don't know of any other router that can give you in this form factor, and for the price at 16.95, 19 total data connections. So the way parent share works, just to be clear, right, is that if phones running the Speedify app join the Miri router's hotspot, on the phone, if you look in Speedify, you'll see Discover Device, Miri Router, click to share with it. Then, if the router finds that the built-in internet connections aren't enough for it, it'll then reach across the Wi-Fi to your phone and borrow some of your cellular. Which is ingenious. Megabits. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, because like at a, let's just say like a ball game, like, a, you know what I mean? You need a little, little bit more data, you're live streaming your kids, baseball game or whatever. You could ask a couple parents in the stand, hey, would you mind downloading the Speedify app? There's a free plan available, but yep. they might start inherently seeing the advantages of that as well. Yep. But it's literally once the app is on. Just run the you, app, join the hotspot. Right. Click share. And whose phone their, is their it phone unlimited out. data nowadays? The Miri router tries to use its built-in connections Correct. first. Because they don't want to, you know, you're probably on battery. They don't want to drain your battery and things. <laughs> so, you know, it's got the, the 4G, the 5G SIMs. Correct. If those are good enough, it uses that. But if those are not good enough, if they're not right. fast enough or they're not working at all, it'll reach across and grab up to 10 megabits off your But it's phone. like your safety net, right? It's waiting and ready for you when you need oh, it. Yeah. You don't have to use it, but when it is, you're certainly going to be glad that you had it. A lot of these sports events are just in you know, a soccer field. Far from everything, and everyone has one or two bars, right? But Correct. Put a couple of those together, and Speedfile will give you a real connection. They will, and then when you think about how data is distributed to people from the cell tower, there's only so much bandwidth, and everyone within that geographic region is hitting on the same sector of the tower, similar bands and so it's not just about like well how do you get more speed if they're on the same carrier if they're on the same carrier but what you need is just more data connections then if every single data connection is worth one megabit and you need 10 megabits to live stream you just need more data connections yeah yeah and the carrier thing is interesting because in the US there's really only three carriers <laughs> right AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. There are lots of other carriers with ads on TV, but if you Correct. look, they all eventually admit that they're reselling one of those three. Correct. So 
you really try to get on each of those networks. You do, and then it comes into like some even other greater complexities, like those other carriers you mentioned, right? Basically, rebuying service virtual out. network operator. Correct. The challenge with that is, is a lot of times what you realize is they're such a low priority on that cell tower. You know, they're like a priority eight when right. the main carrier would be a priority two or three. And then I've recently just heard that AT and T is coming out with this Air Home Fiber, oh. and if you have Air Air home fiber that is priority one on the AT and T tower. Literally, there is nothing that will is greater, and every packet is prioritized for this first 250 gigabits a month. It really does matter, not just the network carrier you get, but also looking at like the actual SIM card and a priority on the tower too. And for a lot of people, you're just browsing the web with their mobile device, not an issue at all. If you're not live streaming, correct. <laughs> but when you're live streaming something and it's critical, you get out. It's you know your production. Company paid gig, you just realize that it's not worth the hassle or the challenges. Just do it the right way. Get onto the network with the highest priority data that you can. I mean, this is exciting stuff, right? It all works with all live view gear. <laughs> Nobody's asking you to throw away your thousand dollar、no. live view. This device talks to the server proprietary protocol. It knows the best settings. I literally hit start streaming. And it'll just do its best job that it can do. But so this is where. The router can work perfectly in conjunction with the video, and you know, look, a lot of people love using this because they, they don't want to stream to one destination; they want to restream to many destinations. So, with many of these devices, when the video gets sent to the server, you can then select any number of sources because here, from site to the server, it's only one stream. So, let's just say it's a six megabit stream. And I push it to YouTube, to Facebook, to Twitch, to my website, to Vimeo, to whatever. Right. If you weren't doing that in the cloud, you would need what twenty six, twenty six times six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it becomes unmanageable and unreasonable for this to handle it. So distributing that from the server end is critical, and that's just what this whole package just lets you do. It's the genius part of it. So how do I get myself a Miri router? It's very simple. Officially launched October eighth at NAB New York, and it will be sixteen ninety five. Shipping will occur in early November. Units are actually already starting to be received, but it is available for order at Miri Tech. You can also use all of the links from Speedify to place your order right through those links as well. Or you know, follow your favorite influencer who's going to have content out. They will also have links to theirs to help support their own YouTube channels and whatnot. So a number. Of Ways to purchase this, and when you buy the router, you'll get the first ninety days of Speedify service for free. It's already included with the router price. Thanks for coming out, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Make sure you check out our other video about Speedify on routers because we get deeply into OpenWRT settings, Wi-Fi Seven, really cool stuff.